Hi, everybody. Happy New Year's Eve to everybody. We're so glad you're here. Hey, do you know what I mean when I say one, two, three, one, two, three? One, two, three, one, two, three. It's kind of unique, isn't it? That's pretty cool. That's fun. It's only going to have some of you math people, science people, uh, analog people might appreciate one, two, three, one, two, three. If you haven't figured it out, just keep smiling and nodding forward and then ask after service. Hey, today I will have a, a one-off message that I want to talk to you about and share with you. Uh, maybe we're going to talk about where we've come from, where we are, and where we're going. That's okay. It's the last day of the year. It's a good time to take a little bit of self-evaluation. And so I want to start with uh, uh, one of my favorite scriptures in all of the, all of the Bible is in uh, John 10.10. 10. And that's where Jesus said, uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, but I've come to bring life, to bring it uh, in, in more in abundance. Listen to it out of the, the, the uh, New Living Translation. The last part says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. A rich and satisfying life. Jesus came to give us a rich and satisfying life. The Passion Paraphrase says, I've come to give you everything in abundance. More than you expect. More than you expect. Some of you are like, well, I expect a lot. Well, he came to give you more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. Jesus has this, this, this passion to give us good. Remember the angel we talked about over Christmas. Good news, great joy, all people. From the beginning of Genesis all the way through Revelation, God is trying to bless his people. He's trying to connect with his people, give him grace. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who, th who strengthens me. Uh, Philippians 4, 19 says, my God will supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, he rewards those who diligently or sincerely seek him. He rewards them. Uh, Psalm 37 says that he'll grant you the desires of your heart. See how God is trying to bless us. He has a hope. He has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a future for us. And I think sometimes we live on this earth and we can get so distracted with our limitations and what we are dealing with and our own personal struggles and our own challenges and our own experiences and what's going on around us that we forget, wait, what's God's thoughts? What are God's words? What are God's plans for us? So I'm thinking today it would be fun if we could just take a little bit of a personal assessment. Uh, you ever taken any of those little person, personality quizzes, those uh, personality assessments? I don't like any of them because they speak too much truth. But uh, hopefully that's what will happen with us today. A little bit of uh, a, a personal evaluation. Maybe even this is a good word. A little bit of self-investigation. So maybe if you, if you like, grab your phones and get ready to take a few notes and you can write some things down. You don't have to share. Get a journal out and write down a few things to help you just examine yourself. We'll look at where we've been, not only just this year, but kind of what's gone on with our life, where we are today, and where we're going in the future. We're going to do all of that in today. <laughs> uh, let's start with 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Peter said this, he said in verse 8, he said, stay alert, stay alert. So today is a little bit of like, stay alert. One translation says, be sober. Another one says, be vigilant. Pay attention, I think another translation says. Open your eyes, take a look, take a look around. That's what we're doing today. And he says, watch out, pay attention, be sober, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring, roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Remember, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. This is what Peter's, kind of Peter's version of that is that uh, there's an enemy, so you got to pay attention. Stay alert. Be sober. Be vigilant. And then in verse 9, and, but stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. So that's, that's what I'm hoping. We can pay attention a little bit today. We can stay alert. We can have a little self-examination. And in 2 Corinthians, or I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we oftentimes read this when uh, we're going to receive communion together. 
uh, Paul tells the church in Corinth in chapter 11, verse 28. He says, that's why you should examine yourself before uh, eating the bread and drinking the cup. Down in verse 31, he says, but if we would just examine ourselves, we'd not be judged by God. Uh, So I'm praying that we could just take a moment to examine ourselves. To pay attention a little bit. Is that all right? Are you ready? So hopefully you look at some stuff and go, wow, that's pretty good. You should be thankful. You should look at some things in your life and go, hey, just between me and Jesus, I'm not so bad, right? But we also maybe be able to find some things like, okay, Jesus, I need some help because I want to move forward. I want to take a step forward and whatever that might be. So that's our goal. Okay, before we get to it, let me give you maybe our foundational scripture that I want to use. Maybe this would be a good one for some of you to have in your mindset moving forward. This is out of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. I love this this passage from Paul writing to the church in Philippi. And he says in chapter 3, verse 12, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things. Those would be the, the goals, the future the, the plans, the purposes, Paul says, if you want to read the whole chapter earlier, or that I've already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. So I know I haven't reached it, but I'm pressing on. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm pressing on. I'm committing. So maybe for somebody here today or you're watching online, maybe today that's your word. Maybe you can turn it off right now and you got your word from God because it's, I got to press on. I got to keep, I got to keep going after it. That's what Paul says here. He says, I'm going to go on and press on. In verse 13, no, dear brothers and sisters, I haven't achieved it. There he says it again. But I do focus on this one thing, which actually sounds like more than one. He says, I forget the past and I look forward to what lies ahead. So that's what we're going to do today. Hopefully we can take a look at the past, forget it, and move forward to what lies ahead. Verse 14, here it is again. I press on to reach the end of the race, and I receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. All right? So there's kind of a good foundational scripture for this, uh, these next few moments as we talk about our past, our present, and our future. Let's address the past, where we come from, where we have come from. Now, I, I, as I said a moment ago, I think it's, it's easy oftentimes to just look at the past, and there's lots of scriptures, and in fact, this one as well. Uh, Corinthians tells us that the old is gone, the new man has begun. So it's easy, and there's lots of good scriptures that say, don't look back. Uh, and yet, there are lots of scriptures that tell us our history and our past helps build our future. And that we can learn from our past. We can be strengthened from our past. And in many ways, uh, the Bible tells us to be thankful for what God has done. So it's a good time. Today might be a good time to go, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the good things in 2023. I know there's been some challenging things. There's maybe even been some horrible things, some tragic things that have taken place. But I'll bet we could find a few things to be thankful for. I bet there's a few things we can say, God, through it all. I've learned to trust in you. Through it all, I've been encouraged. Through it all, God, you were there. You never left me. You never forsake me. I, I can depend on you. I can trust in you. Certainly is not what I planned. This is not what I, what I saw a year ago where I would be. But, but, I, but I'm trusting in you. I'm believing in you. Now, that might be something you want to write down in your notes real quick. What's something, one thing? Maybe your spouse. Maybe your kids. Maybe your job. Maybe this wonderful church. Uh, maybe what was something in your life that you could say, God, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm a grateful person. I want to live grateful. I want to live thank, thankful for my past. That being said, there are lots of scriptures that seem that we are to leave our past, let go of our past, both the good and the bad. Because the good, praise the Lord, we can, we can build on it, but it's gone. Uh, the bad, man, it's a bummer, but it's gone. And many of us try to bring all the past back. Ah, oh, I remember back when I was in college, I could throw that football over that mountain or whatever, you know, and we could do, live this way. And we're like, well, first of all, it's not true. You weren't that great then, and, you, and, you, and you're worse now. Uh, but we try to live in that past. Leave it in the past. The same thing with the challenging things. 
Many of us, year after year, we bring that negative stuff into our, our next year. Hurts and pains and disappointments, struggles, failures. And maybe God has got you in this room right now and watching online right now to say, hey, let go and leave your past behind you. And we've all got a past, by the way, in case you were wondering. We've all got some stories and there's all, all of us in this room, there's probably part of us that I call, I could say, yeah, but there's this one part that nobody's gone through but me, and that's true. But there's nothing new under the sun, the Bible says. And, and so our, our, our confidence is in God that, that we can trust in Him, we can rely on Him, and realize that we all have a past, both failures and successes. But many of us have had hurts, pains, struggles, abuses, and maybe even in this last year, divorce, anger, depression, addiction, adultery, fornication, physical abuse, emotional abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse, strife, depression. Are you depressed yet? Uh, Unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, rejection. These are real issues that honestly, maybe not every week, but definitely every month, many of you talk to us about, and we're aware of, many of the people in our church struggle with one or two or a variety of those things in their life. And we pray together. We give some scriptures. We support. We try to get you some, give you some encouragement, help you through that process, help you to forgive or let go of some of those things. Because there is a healing, there is a path for healing. But these issues, they can, they can linger and they can cause us to be closed or emotionally withdrawn. We can keep a, an arm's distance in our relationships, in moving forward in whatever it might be in a mission from God or your career or your children or various issues. These hangups can hold us back. It, it ought not be. And God's made a way for us to leave our past. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. This is the scripture I was referring to a moment ago. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Come on, say it together. I'm a new person. You are. In Christ, being renewed day by day, the Bible says. That old life is gone and a new life has begun. Now, if we're not careful, we're not going to remember that new life and we'll be caught up into the old life. And here we are. This is the way my marriage always is. This is the health issues. I just deal with this. It's in my genetics. This is what I deal with. I deal with this disease or this virus. I deal with this problem, this whatever it is. It's just eh, it's the way my grandpa was and this way my dad was and the way I'm going to be. Sorry, kids, you're going to get it too. And we just live in this mentality, not what the scripture says, but what we've, what we experience, what we've lived. And we gotta, we got to realize we can change. When we can let go of the past. Have you ever realized how much you've changed? Or have you realized, man, I'm really kind of just the same? Many of you know my testimony. I won't take time to, to go into it now. But I think about where I am now at 59 years old and the blessings in my life with my family and my children and this church and so many things that have happened so wonderful and challenges for sure. Uh, but I, I look back and I think, man, if you knew where I came from and to where I am today, you would know why I have to be on this stage with a microphone and yell about Jesus. Because I've been transformed. My dad, uh, based on the way that I was raised, I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't be on this platform. But because of God's grace and transformation. You know, my dad was a mess. My parents divorced when I was 11. My dad ended up getting divorced six times before he died of alcoholism and liver disease and just just a mess and i think so then i'm in like in my teens and i'm in my early 20s and i'm like okay if i'm going to be a man i can't look at the way that i was raised i got i, I started hearing scriptures like this that the new life had begun 
that I could be a new man in Christ, that I could renew my mind, that I could change. I, I believed it. And I just went to men like you, and I said, how do I be like you? Well, well, I'm not perfect. I know, but you've got this one thing or these two things in your career or your marriage or in your spiritual walk or whatever. I just kind of learned from you, and I listened to speakers and preachers and pastors. And back then, we didn't have podcasts. We had cassette tapes, and I listened to cassette tapes and cassette tapes and cassette tapes. And I was just trying to change, trying to grow. And I, Because I know my old life was gone, but, but the new life still wanted to remain in me. Or the, the old life still wanted to remain in me. I didn't want to bring all that divorce and abuse and alcoholism and all the sexual junk and all that stuff into my future. And then when I wanted to get married, then I had to learn a whole other thing. It wasn't just about being a man. It was about being a husband. And then when I was being a husband, and I'm like, well, now I've got to have, learn how to be a dad. I don't know anything, but I could change. I could change. Some of us today need to change, need to realize you can wipe the slate clean. Many, many of us need to realize that a new life has begun. Here's a couple things maybe you could let go of going into 2024. I believe there's more in 2024. Don't quote me on that, please. Um, things to let go of in 2024. Number one, a fear of the future. Somebody just afraid. Afraid of failure. Afraid of your career, your family, sickness finances, education, just afraid. And I, I'm sorry, I don't mean that like, like it's not a big deal. Like get over it, scaredy cat. I, I, I mean, there's just fear in you and nervousness and anxiety that just, oh, I don't know about the future and I don't know if I could step in. Now the opposite of fear is faith. So the, the, the opposite of fear is, is trusting in the Lord. And so maybe what I'm saying, the answer is, you got, you got to pray. you got to get some scriptures in. you got to get some brothers and sisters around you and say, come on, I'm fighting this, this fear in me. I feel like this is where God's wanting to lead me in my future, but I got this stuff. Leave the fear of the future. Number two thing to, to leave in the, in the past is a selfishness. And nobody likes to say amen to this one, but because uh, we all deal with selfishness. What's in it for me? Uh, you know, I say this oftentimes, but people are like, hey, uh, hey, what do you think about me? I'm like, I wasn't thinking about you at all. I was too busy thinking about me. And so we all think everybody's looking at you, what you look like or what you're acting like or behaving like, and they aren't. And sadly, nobody cares because they care too much about themselves. Okay, some of that, I'm, I'm joking, but, uh, but a lot of it's true in selfishness. Come on, let's leave some selfishness, which includes competing, and comparing and uh, just unrealistic expectations that we put on ourselves. It's just going to lead to frustrations. Come on, leave that selfishness in 2023. Bye. Number three, shame. We mentioned it earlier, just regret and guilt, embarrassment, doubt, shame. Come on, you can leave that in the past. You carry that into the next year. It, I promise you, it's like an anchor. It's just this big weight you're just dragging into the next year. Come on, let's go. I'm coming. Come on, let's go. I'm coming. But you're just dragging all that shame and resentment, bitterness, anger. Number four, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Resentment. Hard-hearted. I wrote down the word hard-hearted. Come on, let go of that hard-heartedness. There's your past. There's your past. Leave it in the past. All right, uh, let's talk a moment about your present. Okay, that's where you've been. This is where you are. Now, this is a tough one. Uh, we'll spend probably the least amount of time on this one, but this is a tough one because this is where you need to be the most honest is where are you really at right now? And just keep looking straight ahead. All right. Uh, where are you really at right now? Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, spirit, soul, and body. Remember, pay attention, be sober, stay alert. Examine yourself. Be aware of your current 
circumstances, your current emotional state. Paying attention, I think it was Socrates that said, know thyself. Maybe that was the greatest summary for him, for mankind and philosophy, that we would know ourselves. And uh, I, I, think, I think Paul's word of, of pay attention, be alert. Peter's stay, stay alert, be sober, be vigilant. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12, we read it a moment ago. He says, I don't, Paul said, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things. Why didn't he say that? Oh, I believe I receive, I've got it. No, he said, I don't think I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. So he's aware of where he's going. But you remember next, he said, but I press on. So he's not letting it hold up, but he realizes I'm not there yet. So he's not just living in the past and he's not just living in for the future. He's aware of where he's at. I realize I haven't reached anything. I realize I'm not there. I, I understand where I'm at. I just pray that we would all just take a moment and examine where are we? Where are you? What's the condition of your life? Your family, your health, your money, your friends. What's the spiritual and emotional atmosphere of your world? In your house, in your car, in your bedroom, in your, when you're by yourself, when you're with your family. What, is there any sort of spiritual awareness is there any sort of paying attention of myself? You know, you, you know, you got a real friend when, when a friend comes up to you and says, uh, you got something right there, right? And something's right there. You need to clean that off. Hey, bro, your uh, zipper's down. Like, that's a bro right there. That's a friend. Somebody who will tell you the truth, help you. Because we, we can't always see the, the, the things that are, are blinding us. I think the word is called a, sc a scotoma. A scotoma is something when I'm looking right at you, but because there's a, a block in me, I can't really see what I'm trying to... I can see peripherally, but I can't really see. There's something that's blocking my view. Many of us have, have scotomas. We have things in our view that are just... We're looking, but we don't really see. The lights are on, but nobody's home. I wonder if we could take some time. Maybe this is a lifestyle of daily paying attention Paying attention. Where am I? Where am I? What, what issues keep coming up in your life? What are you still dealing with? A year ago, three years ago, five years ago, what are you still dealing with? What have you gotten used to? Ouch, this is a, this is a tough one. What have you said, well, ah, that's just who I am. That's good enough. Just throw some duct tape on that sucker. It's good. It's fine. It's fine. A few years ago, we did a series called I'm Fine, which means I'm not fine. Husbands, you're welcome, okay? Just when your wife says she's fine, she's not fine, okay? That was for free. Uh, what have you gotten used to? Or maybe I'll say it this way. What are you settling for? What are you just settling for? Has nothing to do with God's plans. Remember all those scriptures? You can do all things through Christ. I'll supply all your needs. I'll reward you. Life in abundance. You know, I'm fine. This is good enough. I'm okay. I'm good. My bills are paid. God, I'm better than most. Better than some. I mean, I'm not where, but you know, case sera, sera. What will be, will be. We just make up silly stuff. Not paying attention. How about just our, our relationships? We're, we've gotten used to sarcasm. We've gotten used to anger or anxiety depression you got used to just lose sexual talk joking again we've gotten used to bitterness or resentment it's like huh i don't need to they they did that you know one and done what how do they say it's like fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me so we live by weird phrases and weird things not scriptural what have you gotten used to? Come on, this is a, a self-examining investigation of yourself. Don't hide the truth. Don't, don't avoid the truth. With, don't avoid the, the feelings. Get some help. Don't, don't hide. Don't lie. You're, you're walking around hurt, 
get healed. Because hurt people, what? Hurt people. But healed people, heal people. And you can do it. You can change. Come on, you can change. Learn how to be aware of yourself. Look for signs that lead you to that dark side. Some of us just used to getting angry and we can say whatever we want to say. Or we walk out and slam the door. Or we shut down. Or we explode, whatever it might be. Uh, we just walk away. We just, we just deal with stuff and we're just okay with it. Look for those signs that lead us to the dark side. Be careful of the atmosphere. It's like, well, I haven't eaten anything. I haven't drank anything. And I've been stressed out all day. And you think you're going to come home and just be the life of the party in the family? No, be aware. <laughs> okay, just go back outside, drink, eat, get some refreshment, get ready. Now you can go in and be a blessing. But if you've had a rough, stressful day all day long, you've been arguing and fighting and you haven't taken care of your spirit or your soul or your body, and now you walk in and expect your household to just be the love of God and all things good, it's not going to happen. Pay attention to yourself. Be aware. Be present. That's why we're talking about the present. Be present. Be in the moment. And if you don't fix it, you're just going to repeat what you don't repair. You're going to repeat what you don't repair. So notice the physical signs. Before you ever get angry, you probably yelled and raised your voice. Before you go and kick the cat or whatever you might do, you probably just felt all that tension in your stomach or in your shoulders or grit in your teeth or maybe you said mean words or different things. It's like somewhere you've got to stop and get control of yourself and use some self-control before you kick the cat. You can do it. You don't have to kick the cat. Pay attention to yourself. And I just pick anger, but that's, that's you know, de depression, addiction, pornography, whatever it might be. And so set up those things. Break those things. If you're addicted to social media, man, let that stuff go. If you're addicted, whatever it might be, fix it. Find it. Pay attention. Okay? Your past and your present. Let's talk about your future. Let's talk about where we're going. This is a little more happy. Because this is like, I don't know. The sky's the limit. I don't know. And I'm praying that today you can know. I'm praying today that you would see more clearly. Throughout Scripture, from, boy, from Genesis, when God said, told Abraham, go out, look at the sky. Look at the stars. Look at the sand on the beach. Look and see. I'm giving you the future. You know the story. This is, this is your future. He said, look up and see. So many times throughout the Old Testament, New Testament, so many times what God would get people in a place where they saw things differently. Look up and see. And Jesus said, look up. See the fields are white for harvest. Well, I don't see any of that. So I know. Look up. Open your eyes. Open your spiritual eyes. Paul prayed that our, the, our minds, our eyes would be opened, spiritually enlightened. When we talk about the future, where we're going, I'm praying that our eyes, our spiritual eyes would be open. Open to God's purposes. Open to God's mission. Open to God's plans. God's future. Remember, I'm not just saying your future, not your will. Jesus said, God, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus came to earth knowing he was on God's plan, God's will. And when he got in that one situation, he's like, wait, can we talk about this one more time? Are you sure? Because if it was up to me, maybe we could, nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. Okay, that's, that's how we want to live. With God's purposes, God's plan, God's future, God's destiny. I'm praying maybe today we could just stir up a dream, stir up a, a God vision. Stir up a desire. Stir up a, a what if. A what if. What if God and I partnered together, how could my marriage be? Or if God and I partnered together, could I find a spouse? Teenagers, young adults, what, if, what about if you had God's mission, God's vision, God's dream, what would your future look like? 
Hey, you single, young married couples in your 20s, in your 30s. You got maybe one or two kids. You're just getting started. Maybe so you got three or four or five kids. Uh, but God is stirring in you. It's like, what does he have? His mission, his plan for your life. Business owners. Business owners, what's God's plan? Not just what you think you could figure out, what you think could work. You're going to trust in your own self? Come on, lay it at the feet of Jesus. Put it all in trust in him. Because no matter how smart you think you are, you give it to Jesus, he's going to take you further. He's made you that smart. He's given you that wisdom. He's given you that training and that education that really, he's gotten you this far. Continue daily. Just give that over, that destiny, that vision, that purpose, that plan. Moms, dads with your kids. Grandparents for your future. Grandparents for your future. You're not done. Great parent, great grandparents, you aren't done. God has a plan. And you've heard me say this before. When, when we think about the future, I love that car comparison. It's a big old windshield. Big old windshield. There's a great big... Now, you've got a little tiny rear view mirror. Every once in a while, you need to see back. You've even got some side mirrors to help you on the side. But you can't be looking at your rear view mirror and side mirrors all the time. You've got to be looking where you're going. But boy, some of us are so conscious of where we've been. We're dragging all that stuff in. We let it go. Yes, I see where I'm at, but I care way more where I'm going. I'm, 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 on, a, I'm on a mission. I'm on a plan. I've gone on a destiny. Come on, we can do this. Let's have more, more vision than memory. Let's, let's be people that have more plans for the future than memories of the past. And I get it. I'm getting older now. I love to look at pictures. Oh, look when our kids were cute. Now, that's when they were good kids, you know. And we look at all this stuff, and we they're cute and all these things. Man, I got to fight that stuff. Hey, people that are old like me, come on, keep fighting that stuff. Yes, we thank God for the past. But keep planning for the future. Keep that windshield big in every area, in your marriage, in your kids, grandkids, in your money, in your health. Don't just give in. Well, this is what the government can give me. Well, this is just the cards I've been dealt. This is just where I am. I can't, you know, I don't know. Just that we are just focused on God's plan, God's mission, God's destiny for us. Come on, you've been blessed. You've been, you've been blessed. You've been chosen. God's grace and favor is upon you. You've been redeemed. You've been saved. You've been loved. You've been accepted. You're forgiven. You are. Even you are forgiven. You're called. God has a purpose and a plan for you. Every single one of us. It's why we're here. We are here to fulfill God's plan for our life. His purpose for our life. Just like Jesus, he was here to fulfill a purpose from his heavenly father. So are we. What is your purpose and are you on track with it? Man, make sure you have a, a God vision, a God plan, a God purpose for your life. And maybe today you just want to pick one area of your life. Maybe it's your health. And Okay, God, what's your plan for my physical health? Wherever you're at, wherever, whatever level of age, condition you're at, what's my next step to have the physical body that you've designed and planned for me to have right now at this time in 2024 on this earth? And am I, am I walking in that physical plan, your plan? I surrender my body as a living sacrifice. I present my body as a living sacrifice. This is the holy temple of God. This is your temple. You can dwell with me. I'm giving my body, my hands, my feet, my body is yours. Have you ever said things like that? That you're sacrificed, ready to give your body, your flesh. How about you do that with your money? How about you do that with your spouse, your family, your children? In every area, giving it over. Pick one area that, that you're really going to submit to God. Now, the good thing is that the Holy Spirit is promised to be our comforter and our counselor, our helper, our teacher to guide and lead us. Remember Jesus said that? The comforter will come, the Holy Spirit will come, and he'll be a helper and a guide. And, and Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, towards the end of his Sermon on the Mount, verse 33, you know it. Seek first the kingdom of God, then all this other stuff will be added unto you. And normally I'm talking about just this general pursuit of Jesus. 
But notice he says the kingdom of God. All things to do with our world. Not just Jesus' kingdom, but our world, his kingdom come. His will be done in my life. As it is in heaven, so let it be done. Every area. Look at out of the Amplified, Matthew 6, The Amplified says, but first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. Uh, his way of doing and being right. The attitude and character of God. You see, it's a lot more than just, well, I got to read the Bible and pray. And all these things will be, will be given to you also. That's a powerful thought that we surrender our future to God. Submit our future to the Lord. Uh, let me stay on that for just a quick second. The presence of the Lord has to be a priority. Uh, I won't get into the, but the word anointing, sometimes you use the word anointing. I use the word anointing. Uh, but I always think of the anointing is the presence of God. So I pray the anointing on our music team that there's just this every song, every lyric, every rhythm, every melody, every harmony, that there is the anointing, the presence of God. Every singer that we sing, that we express with the anointing, the presence of God, and that we're ministering under the anointing. Well, I pray that for myself. I pray that for you guys. God, as businessmen and women, as moms and dads, as friends, that you would flow in the anointing, the presence of God. I'm praying that you would go into 2024 with the anointing, the presence of God in your life, in your relationships. It's promised. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, and he has anointed you in the name of Jesus. Daily prayer, daily praise, godly discussions. These are practical ways of keeping the Lord in your life, keeping a general atmosphere of the anointing, a general atmosphere of the presence of God. You don't always have to have the band. You don't always have to have the music playing. You don't always have to be on your knees praying to have the presence of God. It's that awareness. It's that conversation. And yeah, it is. It is using and running to the word when, when questions come up. Careful not to run to Google first. Run to the word first. Be, be careful just to, instead of just calling out Google or finding, what does God's word say? What, am, what did my spiritual mentor say? What does my pastor say? What was, it, what was that lesson that we had on? Let's listen to that podcast again. So I don't even know where any of that stuff is. I know, but we're going to try to do something different in 24. Let's create a spiritual environment in your life and keep it fun. Keep it moving and keep it fun. Again, you can change. Come on, you can change. Turn to the person next to you and say, you can change. Don't say you need to change. Just say you can change. You can change. Now listen, you heard me say it this last summer. You don't have to. Hey, you don't have to. Those of you online, you can turn it off. You don't have to change, but you can. You don't have to change, but God's given you the ability and he's given you the desire. It's not an accident you're here. Come on, you can do it. Set yourself up for success. All right, you may need to invest in yourself a little bit more. You may need to go above and beyond. Maybe invest some, some special time, some, some, some dollars. You might have to buy some, some cassettes. Okay, don't buy cassettes. But now, now you can, you can l join podcasts, listen to podcasts. It's all for free. Tons of it is for free. YouTube it and... D or buy some DVDs or get some, uh, get some friends. Go to a seminar. Get some education. Maybe some of you need to go back to school to grow and to learn to become. Uh, in other words, you're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to develop some disciplines. You may have to read your Bible. You may have to read a book. You may have to take some classes. You may, may want to go to get, get some counseling. Come on, you can do it. You can renew your mind. Romans 12, 2 says, you can pull down strongholds, 2 Corinthians says. Pull down strongholds. That's the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for pulling down strongholds. And everything that, exi that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. Don't let those things, pull those things down and take captive every thought unto the obedience of Christ. 
That's 2 Corinthians somewhere. Uh, but listen, God has that, that plan for you. Sorry, it's 2 Corinthians 10, I'm pretty sure. Verse 3, actually, to be for real. Okay, here you go. Real quick, let me give you, I think, five or six things here that can be helpful for you um, to, to make this change. Number one, be honest. Be honest. Be transparent. Remember I said earlier, quit lying. Quit hiding. <laughs> be honest. Admit it. Be open. Confess it, and then repent. That's all number one. Okay? Pay attention. Say, all right. Man, my money is not where I want my money to be. My marriage is not where I want my marriage to be. There, I've said it. I've said it. I'm done, okay? That hurt. That was painful. My body is not where I want it to be. Come on, I can, I can drop some pounds. I can get some, some muscle going in here. I can fight this disease or this thing. I can deal with it. Man, my friendships are not where they should be. It's not what I want. Admit it. Find out whatever it is. I'm tired of being, when are you going to be sick and tired of being sick and tired? That addiction, that I'm just, whatever it is, come on, you can change. But number one, you got to be honest and admit it. Number two, decide on the new vision. Whatever that is, see that future and say, okay, this is where I'm going. Now, a lot of us, we don't like to do that. Because then we're like, "Uh uh-oh, if I do that, I might fail. So what? You're failing now. Come on. Admit it, I've got, a, I've got a, a marriage issue. I've got a relationship issue. I don't have any friends. I've got a, whatever, a money issue. I've got a spiritual issue. I don't know the Bible. I want to know the Bible. I admit it. Okay, my vision is I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to save money. I'm going to get a new job. Whatever that vision, decide it. You don't have to do all of them. Just make a decision. This is my future. Decide that new vision. Now, you may have to re- replace your thoughts and behaviors with the new. Okay, but decide that. You don't have it all figured out yet. You don't know how you're getting there exactly, but make a decision. Number three, write a vision down. Now write it down. Put it in your phone. Write it down. Put it on your, in your car. Put it on a piece of paper. Write it in your notes. Make it into a card. Make it into a plaque. Come on, if you want something different, you're going to have to do something different. You're just playing around. I'm not talking about some little New Year's resolution. I'm talking about make a change. Write it down, make it plain. Habakkuk says, and then those who read it can run with it. So write it down. These, this is, this is the, the weight that I'm going to lose. This is the muscle mass I'm going to gain, whatever it is. This is the new food I'm going to eat or not eat. Make, the, make it a vision. Write it down. Now, number four, speak the vision. Say it. Say it out loud. There is power in your words. Confess it. Focus on the new you. Say your vision. Uh, Jessica and I tr- uh, tried to do this when, when we were parents of our little kids. And our little kids, would, they would take their, their food or something like that. And they'd, you know, they'd try to they'd throw it on the floor. They'd do something. And they'd say, oh, no, no, no. We have gentle hands. And then, and then they'd take it and say, you know, or throw it in our face. We said, oh, no, 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 no. We grabbed their hands and we would just say, we would say, don't do that. You dirty, rotten kids. What's wrong with you? If you had half a brain, we don't say what they're acting like. We say what we want. We say the vision. Does that make sense? Oh, you have the peace of God. Oh, you love mommy and daddy. Oh, no, we, we don't hit. We have gentle hands. We have kind words. Oh, we have a soft mouth. We say kind words. We, we say, okay, so I'm being a little condescending, but that's how we have to, that's, that's a great way to change if we would do the same thing. If we would say that, it's like, oh, no. No, I see myself. I've, I've gained that, that new relationship. My marriage is blessed. I, I'm going to school. I'm reading books. I'm, I'm reading the Bible every day. I'm praying every day. I go to church every Sunday, like a real Christian. I go to church every Sunday. I go to church. I go to church. Hey, I go to church. And you say the vision. Now, some of you don't want to say it because then you feel like, oh, once I say it, I kind of got to do it. And so, Yeah, I know. That's the point. Number five. All right, now it gets real meddling. Be accountable. Be accountable. Now, you don't have to be accountable to everybody. Unfortunately, I, I have to be up here and y'all can judge me every week. But most of you, 
uh, you can just be accountable to a few. Now, pick a few people who will be honest with you, who will be real with you. Not the ones that just tell you. A few of you, I appreciate the pieces out of you because all you do is just encourage me. I, I got a couple of you that almost every week you send me a text or you come and say, oh, pastor, that's the greatest message that I ever heard. I love you. I promise you. I do. I love you. Um, but I also appreciate people in me is that, that was rough, Pastor Frank. You stink. No, she does never. She never does that. But you just need a few people that will tell you the truth. Be accountable. Say, okay, now this is getting too hard now. I just want you to change. I want you to change so bad. You can do it. Okay, and number six, celebrate the wins. Celebrate your wins. Come on, rejoice just over little victories. Hey, I lost two pounds. Woo! Have a bowl of ice cream on me. You know, whatever. I don't know. Rejoice in all the victories. Come on, stay built up. Jude verse 20 says, building up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. Come on, stay strong, built up. Starting next week, we're going to start a new series. And I'll talk about that in a second. But, but uh, man, we're just praying that you can stay strong. Let me finish with a couple scriptures. The Word of God is where I want to finish with. Philippians 4, 13. I've quoted it uh, a couple times this morning. But listen to it out of the amp. Amplified. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens me, right? The Amplified says, who empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'm ready for anything and I'm equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Come on, that's Philippians 4.13 in the Amplified. God is in you all the while effectually working in you to do and to will his purpose and his plan for you. Come on, God's got a plan for you. You can do it. Good luck on your own, princess. But through Christ, he is, you are self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Mm, That's great. That's my prayer for all of us. And I, I, I quote this prayer oftentimes to finish a service or when I say goodbye and God bless you, have a good week. I say, I pray that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I think that's the New King James of Jude 20, but, or 3 John 2. But listen to this in 3 John 2, uh, again, out of the Amplified. It says, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. That's my prayer for you guys. And I pray for your past, your present, and your future, that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul, your spiritual well-being prospers. Would you close your eyes with me here today? Online, stay with me for just one more moment. I want to I wanna pray for every single person here. I'm not going to embarrass you, but maybe there's something in your past that you need to let go of. You need to be healed from. You need to move on. If that's you, maybe just uh, lift up a little hand. I'm not going to have anybody come, but just as a, you think that there's something, man, I got to let this go. Come on, I, I, I want to let this go. It's, a, it's, it's messing you up. It's, dr- it's weighing you down. It's an anger. It's a depression. Come on, just hold a hand up real quickly and let me pray a blessing on you. Father, I pray for those hands here that people have raised their hand, God, that you would help them to let go of the past. They would be healed and set free, that the old man is gone, the new life has begun. A new life has begun. God, I pray that they would be healed. I pray that they will get the healing, the counseling, the comfort, the, the friendship, the whatever it is, God, to let help them to let go of that past. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you are in the midst of a trial and a tribulation right now, a challenging time, and you're looking at where you're at physically, financially, your marriage, right now where you're at presently, you're present, you're like, God, I need some help. Right now, the situation I'm in maybe seems somewhat dire, somewhat stressful. I'm, I'm paying attention and I'm looking around and I'm like, whew, this is pretty rough. What I'm going through right now is rough. 
I want to pray God's healing and favor and blessing on you. If that's you, would you just hold up a hand and wave it at, wave it at me right now. Leave that up as a sign of faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person here right now in this room, every person online right now with their hand up. God, that right now I pray healing, I pray grace, I pray favor, favor, no confusion or doubt or fear in the name of Jesus. I pray healing, healing, healing in the name of Jesus. God, you are bringing salvation. You are bringing peace. You are bringing strength to that situation. God, you are solving the problem. You are answering the question. In you, we put our trust, God. We walk by faith. We walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I believe you receive in Jesus' name. Now, all of us, just lift up one hand and let's pray for our future. But many of us have something specifically that we can pray for. Maybe it's in your marriage or in your health. Maybe it's in a relationship or a career. Come on, every one of us. Let's pray God's will is being done in 2024. That God's plans and purposes are being fulfilled in your life. In every area. Father, I'm praying for every person here in this room, every person online right now in the name of Jesus, as we step into 2024, God, that that you are helping us. We are walking in your word and in your light. We're trusting in you with all of our heart. We're not leaning on our own understanding, but in every way we are acknowledging you and you are directing our path. Your word is a lamp to our feet. Your word is a light for our path. So we put our confidence in you. We put our faith in you. We put our trust in you. We believe in you. Our hope is in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just begin to pray and thank him that God's will is being done in your life. Not my will, God, but your will is being done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, whisper a prayer of thanksgiving. Come on, whisper a prayer of God. I believe you're bringing change and your plans, your future is coming to pass in my life this year year. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, one last thing. If you've never received Jesus as Lord, I want us all to pray this prayer together. With your eyes closed, this is the time right now. You don't have to go into 24, uh, 2024 unsaved or lost or distant from God. I believe you can be born again right now just by confessing Jesus is your Lord. Everyone online, everyone in the room, let's say this prayer together. Maybe you need to rededicate your life to the Lord. Say this, say, dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth, you are my Lord, the boss of my life. Come into my life. Make me fresh and anew. And from this moment on, I will follow after you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.